You're watching Escape Adulthood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. Yes, on this month's show, we're talking about epic banana splits, trapper keepers, and one crucial thing all the best leaders do. Hello, 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 everyone. Show number 101. Woohoo! You are, uh, we're glad to have you. Greetings and salutations, everyone. This episode is brought to you by people like Joy Almond, Amy Gamble, and Pam Luce. Their membership in the Wonder and Whimsy Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Yes, if you'd like to annihilate adultitis in your life, learn about the Wonder Whimsy Society, or just be among the first to know about our newest offerings, become an insider at escapeadulthood.com slash subscribe. Yes, indeed. Uh, 101, you know, Ben asked us an interesting question at dinner. He's like, are you gonna do something with like the 101 Dalmatians or something? Well, like, you know, where were you? <laughs> yeah, where were you when we were oh, show planning? Two weeks ago. <laughs> So no, there are no Dalmatians or puppies running around. I wish there were. That would be a good show if there were literally 101 Dalmatian puppies running around and we just get the literally the camera. That that would that'd probably break the internet. So it's a good thing we're not talking about. Yeah, we talk a lot about whimsy. Of course, that would that would. I can't even talk about it. That would be amazing. But. Um, when we're talking about whimsy, I have to say that uh, Jason added a little whimsy. Actually, you added a lot of whimsy to your studio this week. Yes, the studio has been whimsified. Is done. Dun, dun, dun. Te technically, there's one little strip of flooring that needs it's to put in funny, a transition guys. strip. Literally, a transition slip, slip to get strip to get in is missing. Yeah, it's that's the only thing. But yeah, this weekend, uh, my favorite part. Uh, we were talking in the pre-show, uh, asking people what their favorite toppings are Not for ice cream hungry. toppings. Yeah, yep, you're welcome. Uh, it's sort of like the sprinkles on top, the cherry on top for me. Was finally digging out all of my Funko Pops, all of my toys, been all in of boxes my boxes for like two years, you guys. All of it, yeah. It's been they, I met, I forgot some of the I stuff know. I had. It was so fun reuniting with some of my <laughs> my childhood friends. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I I went busy. I finished it off with the the decor and um, have been working in there uh, this week, and it's been. Amazing. I'm just Lucy and I were at the horse show on Saturday. Those of you in the Wonder Whimsy Society and joined us for the ice cream social, you saw I was remote at the horse stables. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I we got home, we were so tired. And Jason's like, "Come in here," and we got to see. It was just like so complete, you know, to to have all the fun aspects. Which maybe next show we'll do a studio sneak peek. Yeah, we'll have to that. do a, a, a tour yeah. of that. Um, one of the little things that I'm that I love little touches. There's a lot of little little details that I added. Surprise! But surprise! One of the right? things that I did is I bought a. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who saw show number ninety nine, my old man, ninety nine oh. year old self, I am officially becoming an old man because I bought a vintage gumball machine oh. like a stand up on the stand like classic old school red Shit. with the black stand yeah and uh it's the coin operated and uh of course you can rig it so that you, you don't have to use coins which i would totally do but where is the fun in that however however uh, I have this vision of like any any time a kid comes into the the studio, like you want a gumball, right? Like typical old man thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna get a roll of quarters so I can give them a quarter because I'm not gonna make kids. Although maybe that's how I'll pay for the studio. <laughs> the kid, I'm kids, the back of kids' quarters. Um, but no, I'll give them a quarter uh -huh. and then they can do the little cha ching ching, and then ching -ching. and then the gumball comes out. We already did it this week with a couple homeschool friends. So, uh, and they were digging through their piggy bags to find quarters. I don't, yeah, because I didn't have the wrong quarters yet. So, my kids are, are like uh, dumping all the, you know, getting the quarters for their piggy friends. bags they have. Uh, but I told, I, them, I told them I'd pay them back because it's kind of a pain in the butt to get the quarters out afterwards. So, it's a, it's a yeah, whole thing. But I'm officially, okay. I don't know if I'm 99 yet, but I'm well on my way. 
Yeah, uh, I so. think we all have that little streak where it's like, this has to be this way because that's how I feel about it. And yeah. maybe that's there's actually adult, like that's a fighting adultitis thing where you kind of just own what you want and you're like not going to apologize for it. Is that a thing? Yeah. Or maybe just curmungity. Is that Curmudgety? a word? That is not a word. Curmungity? Mungy? Curmungity? What is the word? Curmungently? Oh, right. Like, you know. <laughs> All right, the other thing I'm super excited about tonight, you guys, is this guy right here behind me. I'm probably pointing it right there. Yes. So he's kind of new to you, although you have seen some studio sneak peeks because this was being painted like over a year ago. Mm -hmm. But he has definitely not been new to some of our clients. We've been using this guy um, as quite a centerpiece for a new keynote that's developing about leadership. Jason's going to kind of talk about that in the monologue tonight, but I have to tell you how excited I am because this piece of art is super landing with people. There's something about the combination of those butterfly or the monarchs on top. I saw Sherry Neal is here tonight. Um, you've seen it live, haven't you, in his studio. Um, but the monarchs in the main, the way that he's stepping out into like towards you. Um, it's just really been a powerful piece for a lot of people. So I'm excited for you guys to hear the message tonight because I think it's going to be something that will stay with you. Yeah, I think it's going to be, I'm, I'm excited to share it. People have asked like, what's the story behind it? And so I'm going to get a chance to kind of share a little bit about that. This is actually uh, pretty cool. This is not the original. The original is in our great room right now. Um, the original will not be for sale. However, this is a gallery canvas Limited edition one of one. Um, it's actually embellished. Uh, today I added some paint and some uh, gold touches to it, and it's going to be up for auction yeah. tonight. So um, more uh, details I'm to on share that, that soon. And stick around to the end because we have some really cool gifts, um, some special prizes for someone at the end. Yes, and for Wonder and Whimsy Society members, we'll be doing Escape at Hood Live backstage after the show. So. Uh, stick around for that. But uh, we got to play a game we haven't played in a while called Would You Rather? Okay, friends. Uh, oh. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Not yet, not yet. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I have a very important question. This is, I don't even know how I'm going to answer this. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, would you rather, so we're, we, at the beginning of the show, we were talking about the, the pre-show, which we have, we have a lot of fun when the, when the pre-show, when it's kind of like the show hasn't actually started. So if you're watching the replay, you're going to want to join us live whenever you can. And, uh, because there's about five minutes where people kind of have some, some banter. We asked people, what are your favorite ice cream toppings? We had some really good ones, marshmallows. Ice cream on top uh, of ice cream. Yeah, I think Jeff said uh, the best ice cream topping is more ice cream, which I, who can argue with that? <laughs> so this goes along those lines. So the question I have is, would you rather eat ice cream for every meal for the rest of your life? Like yes. literally every meal. I don't think anything you say next could be okay. Than well, that. that we'll see. Okay. <laughs> Rachel, are you? yes. Uh, or uh, never eat ice cream again. So for you, it's a no-brainer, huh? Oh, that's a confusing question. Well, because to me, <laughs> I don't think I could eat ice cream for every meal. Okay. I wouldn't kill myself. Number I would, a. I would hate <laughs> it. <laughs> or Jessica. I thought that was Mary based on her picture. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. This is like a no. Eat it. Everyone argument. eat it for every meal. Uh, There's enough flavors that you could actually build protein in with nuts. You could actually have a pretty balanced diet. I, I, okay, I gotta, I gotta call you people out. Like everyone's like, oh, every meal, every meal, like every, every seriously single meal. Yes, hands down. Because I can't not eat ice cream. Actually, this is so funny. It's got brought up. I learned some facts about ice cream just today at our homeschool. Thank you, Stacy. Oh. Stacy, Team Jason on this one. All right. Uh, I, I, under, I understand where you people are, are getting ice this. Cream, but, um, Brian. Yes, sir. <laughs> Kelsey's with Kelsey's you. Kelsey's with okay. me. Okay. Is she, is she dairy free? I, I'm not. Oh. I'm not saying that it would be. Hard. This. Is, I think it's a hard choice because, okay. of course, I love ice cream. Yeah. 
But I'm just thinking realistically, like if I live to be 90 years old, I got 50 years of eating ice cream three times a day. I mean, here's obviously the- I'd be 700 bills. All right. That's one problem. Well, could we talk but about let's not the even fact talk that about that's that. not even like part of this conversation. Yeah, it's not. I, yeah. That wasn't, it was just yeah. the factor of, mm-hmm. that's a lot of ice cream. Yeah. Just, I see a lot of people here's what I thought. Reali- realistic about this. I thought there would be some, um, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm trying so hard to convince you. I don't know why I care. But uh, I <laughs> figured... You're trying to put ice cream businesses out of business. No, right I, I was yeah. thinking like, well, giving up ice cream would be quite a sacrifice, but there's so many other sweets and desserts that I think it might make no. up for it. But don't like, convince me. Have to. No! <laughs> no. I want to eat ice cream for every meal. I want... You know what I want? I want to want that. Yeah, see, I love how Stacy was right with me. She, I don't know if you saw that. She said there's always pie, cookies, cakes, brownies, and so much more. Okay, so here's what here's the core of this argument for me. Deb, Deb Buchanan, ice cream every meal, no problem. No. Here's no the problem. core. Here's the core of this whole debate. Do we want to let our seven-year-old be happy or not? Because your seven-year-old would say, heck yeah. I'm not, they're not going to overthink it. And that's who I want to live today. That's that's who I'm letting win well, this fight. That is your prerogative. I know. Uh, and I'm kind of happy Kelsey with it. would do cheesecake for every meal. Okay. So she's got her own So she's zone. got her thing. Right. Um, what <laughs> Nick says nothing can make up for losing ice cream. Um, <laughs> Lynn, Lynn Major, I, I don't think I could eat it every meal. So here's Once the fact, a day, but here's not every meal. Here's the fact I learned today. 98% of Americans have ice cream in their freezer. 98%. Does this shock you? No, but I mean, it does that is actually enlighten this conversation. From what I would think. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it is interesting. Well, that's every meal. Amy that's, Payne. The, that's the debate. Amy Payne, every right. meal. Right? I'm with you. <laughs> Dave <laughs> says, yes, I want to have my seven year old to be happy. Right, Dave. I mean, how often do we let that seven year old be happy? Today's the day. Today's the day. <laughs> All right. I, I think I kind of want to make you eat ice cream every meal. And just see, I don't think you'd make a okay, week. Kara makes I don't a good think she's you'd make a Mexican week. food for every meal. That's Oof, that's some Pepto Bismol right there. <laughs> I don't know if my stomach can handle it, but yeah. I do like the thought of it. Well, yeah. I'm glad it, it offered up a spirited debate. Uh, <laughs> This one, I, I I didn't know how it would go, but uh, it sounds like most people are on board with eating ice cream. You guys cream know for every meal. that when we ta- start talking about sweets, me and Jason are gonna have some heated discussions. We don't often play in the same arena. We get along pretty well, but desserts is one thing where we stray. Although we just shared a dessert recently, peach cobbler. Peach cobbler. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was yeah, was good. yeah, it was really good. <laughs> All right, well, glad we could share that. Uh, let us move on. We got we gotta we gotta oh. make some moolah with this episode. We got we our do? sponsor segment. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. And now a word from our sponsors. And our sponsor is you. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> so uh, as I believe we shared last month, uh, the Wonder Hunt book is finished. Yes, it's officially it done. Is. And. Um, it's at the printer. It's, oh, what a haul, you guys! It's possibly being printed as we speak. Uh, we get it printed up in Canada, eh? And uh, it's it's close. I th- I think they said it might be ready to ship by the end of September. So we're, we're and I'm close. seeing all these awesome names here tonight. You guys already pre-ordered, so just you know, <clears throat> nod and smile for this part. But maybe people on the replay are like, "What's this book? I didn't even know about it." Right? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you asked that because I thought it would be kind of fun to do a little uh, little interview uh, with right. with you uh, on this. Taller. Sit a little taller, and uh, yeah. So for people who have not heard about this book, wh- what is it? Oh. It's your first book, yes, right? It's yes. your first book officially. I mean, we've done some books together, solo project. Tell us a little bit about what it is and who is it for. Yes. Yeah, so Wonder Hunt is a book that was born out of a season eight years ago for me, where um, it was definitely. I was feeling burned out. I was feeling like I wasn't able to find a way to fill my cup with three young kids under six, I think at the time. Um, And I had just kind of lost connection between my heart and my head. I started taking photos out in nature, which for me brought my heart kind of back to a connecting point for me. Um, And then we started calling these walks my wonder hunts. And I started to collect the photos that they turned into doing some writing with it, kind of almost like poetry. 
And this guy kept encouraging me. I'm like, do more of this, do more of this. Like keep, you know, keep getting out there for your walks, keep taking photos. And before you know it, it was, I was sharing it from the stage at, you know, one of our um, summits, uh, getting really cool response and with social media. And it kind of turned into a course, which then turned into so a deck of cards, um, the little course, that, you know, kind of promptings to help you find wonder um, and to bring some of that childlike uh, wonder back into your life. And then here we are writing, you know, at the beginning of the year, we're like, it's time to write this book. There's more to be told. What, what does wonder mean? You know, we say it's a scavenger hunt for the soul. So the idea that wonder can bring a part of your heart back to connect, a connecting point for you. Um, it has for me, and the book was really a fun development for me to kind of really work through this concept and figure out what it's all about. Um, and obviously Jason designed it, but it has my photos and then fellow wonder hunters photos. Mm -hmm. So there are 31 challenges, um, 20 or 21 of them have been in courses and things like that we've shared, but there's 11 new ones. There's 31 contributors. Um, many of you who are here with us tonight, uh, are a part of this book. Um, so I'm really excited. It's a beautiful book. This guy brought it to life with the design your photos, my photos all together. It's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, had some good source material to work with there. Amy Payne says wonder hunt has truly changed my life. I love wow. photography and I love the reminders to give myself permission to make it different and fun. And she actually bought a bunch for her teachers, yes. uh, as part of the pre-order. And that, that's kind of an interesting thing is wonder hunt has existed in multiple forms. Yeah why the book and what makes the book different than say the course that we've done or the even the deck of cards or whatever what what yeah. does the book bring to the table well i think for a while and some of you maybe followed me on instagram or facebook you've seen that i'm trying to work through what this is all about charlie brown right and so that was part of the challenge with this book is to say it's not just challenges and it's not just nature it's not just photography. What is it? And so, as you know, we really dedicated as a family. This is a family effort to get, you know, mom to write a book because there's just a lot of roles that I play in the household. Um, so there's dedicated writing days where I just had to like work through stuff. And some of it didn't even make the book. It was just kind of for me. But it was really helpful journey for me to go on and sit um, on a swing set next to my seven-year-old self and ask her where she found wonder. I kind of shared a little bit of this story at the summit, but the gist of it is that I was surprised. I was, in, in, that was one of the things that I shared at the summit was like how surprised I was with what she told me um, and what that brought to life for me as a grown-up and what that means for like where I find wonder now. So the process has been really healing or it's been really um a journey and then of course some of you know <laughs> that at the end of writing the book we had the storm here on our property that was devastating and required even more healing and then that changed the whole ending of the book there's a whole new chapter based on what happened it was just the timeliness of it had to be what it was and it allowed me to kind of almost see wonder hunt for the healing the, the healing nature that wonder has was brought to light, you know, kind of in the ending. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Okay. Bonus or bonus round, lightning round, kind of touch, maybe kind of touched on it in your last qu answer, but what was, what was the hardest thing about this book? Doing it for the, doing a book for your, by yourself for the first time. What, what was the hardest part of it? Um, I think it was probably giving myself permission to take the time I needed. Mm. So I, you know, maybe like two months in, I was like, oh no, this, I haven't produced the amount that I thought I should be in terms of like outcome. So, and Jason was, you were very, um, experienced and, and guided me through that on many walks of saying, 
this is just for you. What you're working through is just for you. You know, this it's almost like a therapy session that's months long with yourself. And and in the process of doing that, I think I brought we were able to bring the wisdom out of what needed to be shared, but it definitely didn't all need to be shared. And the, the magic is in knowing the difference, right? What can what's powerful and what's personal and what's both, right? Um so what was your question? What was the hardest part? Yeah, it was all that. It was looking like, through it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. But, yeah, maybe this is the same thing, but was there something that, that surprised you about the process that you weren't expecting? Um, Probably the same same yeah. answer. I wasn't quite ready for <laughs> the heavy lift. Surprised at how hard it was. Yeah, it was a heavy lift, but um, I'm really excited about what came from it. And I'm I feel like I'm a better person because of it. I feel like I've grown... And I think all of that process for me needed to happen when June 15th hit mm. and the storm came because I felt like I had a, a stronger footing underneath of me maybe to be able to, to deal with that next mountain we came upon. Yeah, so. well, that's pretty cool. I think uh, Jessica speaks for a lot of people. Jessica Bree says, a mom taking any time alone seems impossible, so good job. It was hard, um. Jessica. <laughs> but the kids are at good ages, I have to say that. like. You know, our youngest is eight. And so they are all at ages where they can make their own food and do their own thing. And dad really jumped in and, and solved problems on those days that, <laughs> Who knew? you know, that were really big problems, I'm sure, you know. So anyway, but well, I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, your look when it arrives, because that's a magical moment, pulling it out of the box for the yeah. first time. And I'm excited for all of you who pre-ordered to see it, I think you're I think you're all excited about it, but I think you're going to be even more impressed than you even think. So if you are still looking to, to check it out, um, thewonderhunt.com is probably the best place to learn about The Wonder Hunt and uh, order the book. So check it out and uh, hopefully uh, it'll be in, our, in your hands very soon. I know. I'm excited. Thanks for all your support, guys. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. His name was Joel, but I called him Mr. Dawson. He was one of the best leaders I've ever known. On the surface, Mr. Dawson was just a regular guy who coached youth baseball. But he was kind, humble, and strong, albeit not in the bench press dump truck sort of way. A rare autoimmune disease took several fingers on one hand but he was able to balance a baseball with it while holding a bat with his other hand. During practice, he'd carefully toss the ball upwards and whack it with the bat in the direction of a fielder. When I played Little League, he managed an opposing team, but his vote helped me land on the All-Star team. He became my coach after drafting me when I turned 13 and moved up to Junior League. I was an occasional pitcher. My fastball wasn't very fast and I didn't have a curveball, but I kept the ball over the plate. The good news is I rarely walked anyone, but the bad news is batters usually salivate at the prospect of facing someone who throws slow and straight. That is absolutely clobbered. Good gosh, where is that gonna land? Oh my, what a bomb! The back of my baseball card was not impressive. Perhaps not surprisingly, I had never been the winning pitcher of a game. I could claim that it was because the teams I pitched for were never that good, but then again, neither was I. For some unknown reason, Mr. Dawson decided to make it his mission that season to get me a win. It took a while, but somehow his persistent belief in me sunk in. I actually started believing it was possible. I don't even remember the score of the game when it finally happened, but I do remember the feeling. I remember his proud smile, and I remember being happier for him than I was for myself. That's what the best leaders do, believe in people. Oftentimes, those people don't believe in themselves. Sometimes it might be for a good reason, and sometimes it's the natural result of not having anyone in your life who does. But the good leaders see a spark. Heck, maybe the spark doesn't even exist, but their belief that it does is so convincing, it's as if they're somehow able to will it into existence. This painting was inspired by C.S. Lewis's character Aslan, the Christ-like figure in the Chronicles of Narnia. It's a great image of the best kind of leader, 
brave but vulnerable. He's confident in knowing what he's about, but kind enough to welcome the lowliest creatures into his friendship and protection. Malcolm Forbes said, you can easily judge the character of a man by how he treats those who can do nothing for him. People are fragile beings, like the butterflies in this painting. I sure was when I was 13, a shy, skinny kid with oversized glasses, playing on a team stocked with much better athletes, trying to figure out who he was and what he had to offer. The best leaders walk with us out of our past and into our future, accompanying us from who we've been to who we can be. We all need people like that in our life. If someone believes in you, consider yourself lucky and take them at their word, even if you can't yet see what they see. Mr. Dawson died too soon from cancer shortly after I moved on to high school. More complications of his condition. By then a close friend of the family, I saw him face his final battle and the unknown of the next life with bravery and good humor. Sometimes in life, we're the butterflies. We're fragile and need to believe the people who care about us are right when they tell us they see greatness within us. Sometimes in life, we're the lion. We're called to be leaders who seek out the lost, the young, the weak, and the forgotten. Our job is to look for the good in them, believing in them as long as it takes until they can see it for themselves. Thanks, Mr. Dawson. Oh, what do you guys think? I, you know, when you do that close up of the the face at the end, and you're panning out, you see the scar that he's got. Um, we had a staff recently use this photo as their kind of fall kickoff. A bunch of educators, or not use this photo, but use the photo of the art, um, and they asked everyone in the audience to write a little kind of message about what they felt like this artwork mean to them. And she sent all of them to me. Oh, I, I didn't see send, that. I know. Cool. I have to send, send it over to you. Um, but, but wow. I mean, the, there was a, quite a variety. Um, so if that's something that you feel like you would like to share, if this artwork is saying anything to you, it's kind of interesting for us to hear. Um, for some reason, this one has a lot of weight to it. Yeah, it seems to really uh, resonate with people. And uh, that, what what I love about um, making art is, you know, I, I have a chance to kind of share what was going on in my mind when I made it. But sometimes uh, my favorite part is hearing other people's interpretations, because I think sometimes what I say, like connects with people and they're like, yeah, like I get that. I want to I, I, I want to have that piece of art to remind me that. And then other times it like it connects with something else on a, on a different way um, based on a personal experience that they have with that image or that landscape or whatever. So, um, and sometimes, sometimes people's interpretation, like, oh, that's even cooler than what I even Well, thought, yeah, you know? obviously so. people have connections to lions. They have connections to monarchs. There's the metaphors of hope, but there's metaphors of change and transformation and, and the leadership and he's, you know, so it, there's just so much opportunity here to take something from it. Yeah. Um, so well done. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you probably see uh, on the screen here, uh, escapeadulthood.com slash auction. Um, we are auctioning it, auctioning this off. I don't know if I can uh, get a, a look here of this uh, close up because what I did is, is what they call um, embellishments. I guess you could say. Oh, yeah, you're going to do the little um, Yeah, I can mm -hmm. try that. Um, I saw Marilyn Loveland's on tonight. I wonder if she would have known Mr. Dawson. Oh, uh, boy, I don't know. Back not sure. to uh, LaSalle County. I was curious if there's a connection there. Okay, what did you do okay, here? Okay, so uh, a couple things. So I signed it uh, in gold Sharpie there. That's cool. So that's a, mm -hmm. it's hand signed. And then I traced the butterflies in gold so oh, that's yeah. a little bit different Pops. than the original right almost makes me want to do it to the original <laughs> um and then uh i don't know how well you'll be able to see this but some of the the white whiskers and the highlights mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of that purple on the nose and then in the eyes oh yeah um, i added some of the yellow and highlights and basically that's like 
a real paint over the top of this printed canvas. Huh. So uh, technically, this is uh, a one of a kind because uh, it's it's enhanced, embellished, if you were, with, if you will, with. Uh, and you can kind of really see the the prints. I mean, we obviously have done the research to get like a print company that does a really good job. But Jason does a lot with the background and really pops nice on yeah, this. Yeah, it turned out. It's hard turned to out really good. It's a reprint. Yeah. So I definitely wanted to um, uh, let me make sure this is right. There we there go. We go. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make sure I knew that after doing this one that we weren't going to be able to let go of the original. Um, but I wanted to create something special for. Uh, that's kind of feels like an original. And the cool thing about this is because it is is a canvas reproduction that we decided to start the auction bidding pretty low. It yeah. starts at $100. So um, it's approachable, you guys. The actual right? original of this would probably be at least $5,000 mm -hmm. for, for the, it's pretty the, huge. the original. It's really big. Yeah. Um, so this is a little bit smaller, a little bit. Uh, I basically wanted people to be able to jump in on it if they could. And um, we will be having um, uh, smaller prints eventually, but they're just they're not available yet. So the main thing right now is this uh, this au on auction tonight. Can you read what Helen said there. I was starting to read it, but then it went up. Uh, Helen says it's the depth of kindness in his eyes, the strength in his presence, and the regal carriage he has. Yet the butterflies are drawn to him. That's a great way to. I love it. Mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, I also saw Dave said earlier, I like how he's emerging from the dark into the light. That was also a big thing that, yeah, was, that was really part of it for powerful. me, part of the symbolism. So, um, yeah, so this auction, you should know, this is, goes a little bit shorter than the last one. So okay. we had the Sherpa original that we sold. Mary Eichemeyer was the winner of that auction. That was. Congratulations, uh, Mary. Last month. And that went for almost two weeks, week and a half or so. This is yeah. only going until Sunday. Okay. So we've only got about three days on this one. Um, so if you're interested, check it out. Um, but yeah, this is kind of fun to finally be able to share this one because yes. it's been in the works for a long time. It traveled with us to Madison. From Madison? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that tells you because we're coming up on a two year anniversary here. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of art, uh, we have a little studio sneak peek here of something I haven't really done a lot of sharing yeah. with, but I also do some digital artwork mm -hmm. as well. So uh, here's a little sneak peek at that. So what are we working on here? Well, i am finally uh, got my Wacom Cintiq set up today, and uh, I'm working on some artwork for upcoming secret missions for the Wonder and Whimsy Society. So this is uh, kind of a fun thing. I'm just using uh, Photoshop here, and uh, I can draw right on the screen as I'm doing here. I have a little reference of a pumpkin on this side that I can kind of keep an eye on. And uh, I just, I love that I can um, work on this. I love that I can work on layers. So this is the paint. You can see the drawing that I have here is a different layer. Um, eventually I will be able to take that drawing and let's see if I will be able to drop down the opacity of it um, because I won't need it anymore as I add more detail, more, um, crispness to this so like an, an example I'll, I kind of like tighten this up here with these blurry edges and kind of create some outlines and uh, take that a little bit sharper keep refining it over and over again and um, yeah so this the fact that this is uh, digital allows me to if I oh shoot I messed up command Z that's my favorite thing about digital compared to uh, actual paint is it's a little bit harder to undo what you just did um, and I can actually do multiple things so obviously I don't usually do this but if I am going in a direction I don't like or I'm using color like boom 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 gone so and much better what is this <clears throat> device this device is a drawing tablet it's a Wacom Cintiq um, it's fairly old several years old now but I can plug my computer into it so it basically acts as a monitor to what's going on with my computer, but I can draw on the screen. So uh, that's uh, 
something that I bought with the advance from Penguins Can't Fly way back in the day. And uh, much of my digital art is done in this fashion with Photoshop, my MacBook Pro, and this Cintiq. So a little look at uh, something a little bit different this, this time of uh, the digital side of things. Very cool. <laughs> I never really get to play on that. I think no, that, that needs a change. <laughs> I, I love how I had to explain. Uh, I don't usually just draw scribbles over my artwork. I don't usually do this, for the record. I love how you have like candy that. there too. You're like chewing. Yeah, sprays. I was like, why? Why is there a dollar bill there? But then I remembered, like, I was actually drawing George Washington. So it's weird, <laughs> weird stuff. But wonder and whimsy, people. That those are some sneak peeks to some. Uh, secret missions coming up so um, all right let's keep it moving that's some snazzy little music i like there. that music okay yeah. kim do you know who e bryant crutchfield is um he looks like uh a composer from mm, that's a good guess yeah kind of looks like the uh Brian Epstein from the Beatles to me. Yeah, you know, that he marriage. does. He's actually, uh, he passed away uh, last month at the age of 85. Mm -hmm. He was the inventor of... Oh, I bet I know now. The Trapper Keeper. <laughs> Do you have a sound effect for well, that? Well, <laughs> interestingly enough, we had some fun uh, details about this. Who here uh, had one of these Trapper Keepers? Some of, some of the people uh, may be too young. Some may be a little bit too old. Um, but yeah, I was smack dab in the middle of the Trapper mm -hmm. Keeper generation. Yep. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of interesting to do a little research um, on where, where it came from. And it, I mean, it totally, it was like office supplies don't really, that industry doesn't really get big splashes. Yeah. It's not like, here's the new iPhone, you know? So that actually was huge. And it uh, started, I mean, it was very old school market research that he just, he just, did research, he planned, he was like looking into things. Um, he realized in 1972 that there was some uh, research that showed there would be more students per classroom in the coming years mm. and they would be taking more mm. classes and they would have smaller lockers. Oh, so he started trends. putting things together that, mm. okay, we need to come up with a way to help them manage all their stuff in a mm. compact sort of way. And uh, I, this was kind of interesting. So. He was putting a mock-up together and he was talking to a sales rep on the West Coast. And uh, the, the sales rep was like, why don't you make pockets vertical, uh, you know, the up yeah. and down versus the horizontal. And yeah. those are actually called, I didn't know those are called peachies, which stands for peachy king, keen. Oh. Okay. And they had been around since the 1940s, but they were only really kind of popular on the West Coast. Huh. Okay. okay. So Crutchfield, who was the inventor, is like, well, these are really not that popular. Why would I do it this way? And the sales rep noted that when you close the trapper keeper, um, the papers are trapped inside. Mm. So, you know, like when they're horizontal, they'd come yes. out the top. They'd and fly out happens, the top. And so right. when you have them this way down. and then close it, then they're mm -hmm. they're stuck in there. Yeah. And they're not flying all over the place. Trapped. Um, so that was, by the way, Catherine doesn't even know what this is because they don't have them in New Zealand, New Zealand. So right, someone well, help her out. Pay attention. Yeah, yeah. I'm explaining it, Catherine. All right. This, this is a little history lesson for it's anyone who doesn't know. Yeah. Different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, the name came up, they called the, uh, folders trappers. Okay. So I didn't know that. They actually referred to in the article to folders as portfolios and then they called those trappers okay. and then they said, well, what are we going to call the notebook? He said, well, we'll call it a trapper keeper. Hmm. So interesting. So so a couple of the uh, iterations that happened. Now, this kind of brought me back because it's been a long time since I've seen a Trapper Keeper. Yeah, I Do you remember? Them. Okay, so they had they were the PVC. They're like plastic binders. Yeah. Um, I think, I, yeah, I got some, some pictures there. Oh, we had the horse one. Did you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. Oh, that green. Yes, I, I did. Uh, so they had the, uh, they had so three, cool. three colors of the folders, mm. red, blue, and green at the very beginning. Okay. They were plastic binders, right? Then they had that um, pinchless rings. Remember that? Oh, yeah. They slid instead of snapping. Huh. Remember that? It was like, sh sh yeah, slid I back and forth. Did. So okay. I was like, oh, yeah, that was a fun little detail. And you mentioned the uh, Velcro, but they actually started out with the snap. 
They had a really? snap, like a little button. I don't remember that. And uh, eventually that got changed mm -hmm. to Velcro. Velcro was kind of a hot new item. Isn't that a funny thing about Doreen, it? Doreen, totally. Our school, I don't think. Mary Beth and I went to the same school. Like, tell me, Mary Beth, I don't think we could have them at St. Pat's. Well, you know, there's a there's a link in the show notes. Jenna put that put the link in there um, where I got a lot of this information. And they said that teachers, <laughs> they, they came out with knockoff okay. ones that were bigger. Uh, and they stuck in the kids' desks and they took up too much space. So much and so drama. a lot of teachers banned them. But then when the teacher saw what a real trapper keeper was, they're like, oh, those That's are fine. fine. I don't have a problem with those. So it was so very. The knockoffs killed his industry? Well, basically? they sold plenty of trapper keepers. Uh, let don't me feel tell bad you. for it. No. Um, so they, they put like a commercial together. He said they took $5,000 to put this commercial oh, together. Okay. And they tested it in Wichita, Kansas. That was their market to see if this would work. 1978 is when this. This started. Okay. They rolled out the trappers and uh, they sold out completely. It was like, it hit like crazy town. So they had the, the three original folder colors. Hmm. They had three solid color designs and then three, uh, a soccer dog and a cat, a dog and a cat. And then the Oregon coast was the other design. Oregon and coast. they started out with the, uh, the folders were 29 cents a piece. Oh. And the trapper keeper was four eighty five, four dollars. So even though the folders cents. came in them, you had to buy it separately. Well, you could buy extra. I think, okay. I, think, I don't know if they came with some. Hmm. Um, but you know, Crutchfield says that it was the biggest thing they'd ever done. He saw kids fight over the designs in retail. Huh. Um, so then, uh, then they came out with, as you may remember, more of the oh yeah fashionable nineteen eighties designs. Lisa Frank. Anybody oh, yeah. here remember Lisa Frank did those mm -hmm. stickers? Puffy she was stickers. licensed. Uh, Lamborghini was a license. Um, it was pretty cool. Lamborghini. Yeah. Uh, Lamborghini was like, yeah, we want in on that. <laughs> we want to get these kids pining. Because that's our market. They, teenagers well, buying Lamborghini. Are like... people who own sports cars, sports cars not basically little boys well, still? true. I know I, know I want to for Trevor keepers? But... I don't see it. Young boys. Young boys. So, thank you, Mary Beth, for answering my question. Yeah, I don't think we had them at St. Pat's, but yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, honestly, here's a youngest child moment. Just like in my Whimsy Wednesday, I was kind of reflecting back on being the youngest this week. I don't know that I actually owned one. I think my sisters did. But I kind of lived vicariously through them. There was a there was a <laughs> me, there was a meme I was going to do with uh, Dawson from Dawson's Creek, like crying, and it said didn't have a cat trapper keeper. I have, so, yeah. I have like the youngest memories of not knowing if I actually had one or not, or if it was just somebody else's, you know. But yeah. yeah. So it was interesting. They talk about like why why do people still have an affinity for the trapper keeper so question. many decades? And they said it basically boiled down to like what it allowed kids to do. It was fun to be able to show your personality through the binder that you had. Um, he, he, this guy says, you don't really remember a notebook or the pens or pencils you used, but maybe you remember your trapper keeper. Hmm. And uh, Mr. Crutchfield said, when I first went to work on this, all school products were drab and boring. Trapper keepers were more functional and more attractive with oodles of choices, hmm. therefore fun to have. And I had a lot of fun making them fun sounds like an adult i spider yeah me, i mean right? this is pretty cool uh trip down memory he, lane he probably opened the door for licensed folders right like smurfs on your folders or like kitty cats or whatever they yeah because then you'd put stickers on the top of them too and right yeah so, so it's uh, you paved the way for a lot of fun pretty cool mr yeah. crutchfield we salute you sir rest <laughs> in peace All right, meme of the week. You kids and your iPads. When I was young, the Trapper Keeper was on. We <laughs> We're still laughing about Dave Timmermans. Yeah, I can't believe plastic that I did not have one. Our dime. school used to sell plastic bags for a dime. For your papers? I don't know. That's. I don't. I don't know I what don't that know. means, but we need more information. Yeah. but that is awesome. Uh, okay, well, a little uh, little thing here, adult dietist fighter. A little alert. I have to. I think I have to see what. Yes. Okay. So last Plastic last books la time. last month, um, we did a oh, what's yeah. happening, <laughs> and we showed this picture, and we asked people to caption it. 
And we had some really good captions, but nothing, no caption was better than the photo that Mr. Nick Wesson sent us and uh, gave us permission to share this. Who did it better? Who did it better? I, I think Nick. I don't. I mean, I don't think the the llama has sandals that he's balancing on no, his feet. No, no. You know, uh, Nick said the only th- this is the only thing more <laughs> more terrifying than than the drawing he submitted. Which uh, oh, there were some good uh, drawings. There were some good llama drawings oh, we'll yeah. talk about in a little oh, bit. Yeah. So uh, Nick, epic. I can't even tell you how much I love you for doing this and allowing us to share it. So so good, so good. You are, yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to get a screenshot of this right now, Nick, and frame it on your desk at work. Yep. I think it would just help people understand you a little bit more. It's pretty, yeah, <laughs> it, says, it says a lot. Uh, okay, so this this week or this month, I'm still stuck on the week thing. I know. Um, this month, we're uh, giving you a little tip on banana splits. Yes. All right, so every month, Wonder and Whimsy Society members get a secret postcard in the mail that. Gives a secret mission, yep. something to accomplish, right? And uh, this month was uh, basically, it was very simple. It was build an epic banana split. Um, There's not much else to say. No, Just we, go do it. we even provided sprinkles mm-hmm. in the last mystery mailing as a little, little touch for people. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got a chance to do this ourselves. We pulled out a lot of different toppings. I think earlier in the show, someone was talking about the, uh, the chocolate that dries hard and then snaps. Yeah. Uh, we call that magic shell. I'm not sure if that's what you're I referring think that is to, what but it's like, what it's called. Yeah, I think it might have been uh, Catherine in New Zealand. So I don't know. I may be wrong on that, but uh, I don't know if they call it magic shell yeah. down under. Right. Uh, <laughs> but we had whipped cream, we had chocolate, caramel, strawberry toppings, sprinkles. I'm serious, you guys. Whipped cream. Oh yes, cream. and bananas. And uh, here's the here's the clan. <laughs> we had a couple different kinds of ice cream going. We had Oreos. That was oh, the other yeah. thing. We crumbled up Oreos. We like Oreos. Um, mm. Ben and the kids were loving. The whipped cream. His face. Uh, this was not like uh, him exaggerating. That's literally what his face was. Uh, what about this face? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am wearing a robe while eating banana splits. That's, so that's, how, how, you, you <laughs> that's how you know you've hit rock bottom. <laughs> I'm just trying to practice it eating is, ice cream for every meal, you guys. It's 11 o'clock in the morning in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. She maybe just not. rolled out of bed. Uh, here's Lucy. With her finished, yeah, uh, she looks proud. Finished. I love how her, her shirt makes it looks like it's. Like, I love ice cream. <laughs> I know. Or I love right? uh, banana splits. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we uh, oh, we have some adultitis fighters who also because the cabinets with us. matched ours. I was like, were they at our house? <laughs> <laughs> when did this happen? Uh, they. I really like what they did there with the multiple bananas yes. coming out. It's, it's almost like sculptural art. And the cherries, well, done, Martha, well placed. And Rich. Yes, right? really good job. Nice. Uh, Stacy, uh, I, I got a little couple notes on this. This was her, her and her son and her daughter in law. So, so cute. She said they invited her to dinner and she was trying to figure out what to bring to go along with the meal when I remembered this month's secret mission. So, a quick stop for some essentials. Essentials at the grocery store and their favorite ice cream shop. And I surprised them with a banana split bar for Aww. dessert. Thanks, Kim and Jason, for the sprinkles packet, too. Happy to oblige. Happy to oblige. And uh, I think we got a close-up here. I love those little, uh, whatever those little wafer cookie wafer things, things are. That is yeah, a those good are hard to find. looking banana split. Hershey Kisses. That's a good. It's a perfect platter. We don't have those kind of platters. It is a really good platter. Um, then we got uh, Kara oh, and Paul. Yes. They're always up for a secret mission. I noticed um, they like the sugary ones too. Yeah, they, I, you don't really have to convince them of those, but they <laughs> those are some good looking ones. I like the colors. I yep. like the colors of the dishes. Always love the selfie. Uh, I like the presentation mm-hmm. here. Mary, this is a dairy free version, believe it or not, with Hashtag coconut milk rule, based right? frozen dessert. Mm-hmm. Banana, strawberries, uh, carob chips. Um, looks good. I know. I like the little, it does look good. I would try that. Pretty, pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else we got? Oh, Heidi. Heidi had a brownie ice cream banana splits for dinner. My daughter thought it was so good. She just told me that she had a second one for breakfast. <laughs> every meal. Every meal. Every meal. Every Amy freaking meal <laughs> uh, for the rest of your life. And then uh, last but not least, we had, we had actually a bunch of them. I, I, couldn't, I didn't have time to share all of them. But uh, Sharon and Scott, this, this one stood out. 
Mm. Look at that rad founding member Wonder and Whimsy pendant in the background. I kind of feel like she had like lighting that she put on this. She did a good job with her photo. So get this. This is the over 21 banana split. From left to right, banana split cocktail. The one in the middle is a banana split dessert drink. And the third one is the banana split martini. Oh my goodness. We can have visit them. I want to want to. Dig into that. Oh, ship it to us. I feel like we... Can you ship that to us? We need to do better. I know. Um, so you, you guys challenge us. That's what it's all about. It is and what it's all about. It's not about topping each other, although the toppings are good. But it is about being inspired. And yes. you guys always take it in a direction that we would never have thought of. So. Yeah. So Kudos. if you uh, have not had a chance to do this yet, please do it. Share it. We just gave you some inspiration. Um, some... Some good stuff there. Yes. And uh, if you're not a Wonder Whimsy, you can still make it a uh, banana split. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. kind of why we right. want to share it. That's right. a way to fight adultitis is making an, an epic banana split. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, now is the time. Get out your crayons, colored pencils, finger paints. Let's draw. All right, let's jump right into this one here today. This is going to be a fun one, as usual. Uh, I'm going to take you step by step through a drawing. Uh, oh, no. No. Come on, I was man. just looking at my llama from last time, and I kind of, like, jerked. Hold on a second. Okay. Just in case uh, you forget what happened last time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me uh, see if I can... Uh... Pull this up here. Restarting the tech. I don't know why this gives me yeah, such trouble. You guys know. One little word. Mm, capital A. Is. Always capital A because he's cute. Thank you, Stacy. I appreciate that. He kind of scares me a little bit. I see him in my nightmares. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, one thing I loved about the summit this year. Oh, yes. oh you, got, you got it? Was All seeing. Right. Ooh, Stephen Saki's whole notebook of these. So that's one of my highlights. All right, Jenna, we're going to let you uh, cut that part out. Jenna does all the video editing. So I'm going to, we're going to take a little, little break here, doing nothing, and then oh, okay, she'll be able to cut it out. All right, all right. guys. So here we go uh, with the let's draw for tonight. I'm going to take you step by step through this uh, drawing, get something to draw with, something to draw on. It could be the back of a napkin. Uh, or an envelope or the back of your husband. Yeah, that's fine, too. Mm -hmm. All right, let's start out with uh, a little uh, a little shape here right in the middle mm -hmm. like that. Almost like a little uh, baby carrot, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to draw a couple horizontal lines about in the middle like that. All right, um, then we're going to draw a couple diagonal lines coming down. About the same length, like so. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to draw some diagonal lines uh, towards the top, but they're going to be a little curvy. All right, so watch this. I'm going to make them a little bit longer and I'm going to curve it a little bit. Ooh, okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side symmetry. Ooh. All right. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. All right, now we're going to connect these uh, bottom lines with a little bit of a curvy shape like this. And then we're going to bring this top one, connect it down like this, both sides. Oh, that's kind of cool. Ooh, there we go. We got a butterfly Ooh, shaping up, it. you guys. Julie all right, we're going to make a little, uh, a little wedge shape here. Watch how I do this. A couple little diagonal lines on each side. Mm. Like that. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> Don't go all the way to the edge. Leave a little bit of space. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we're going to fill that in. Oh, I see what you're doing. See? Yeah. And then we're going to draw a couple, just a couple more quick lines just to give you a little bit more of those uh, segments. This is sort of a uh, um, abstracted, simplified monarch. Okay, hmm. so now up in this, uh, up in the top wing, I'm going to draw kind of a 
a elongated raindrop teardrop shape, kind of like that. There you go. And then again, symmetry, same side, same thing on the other side. All right, and now I'm going to draw some uh, little, I don't know what even to call these, but just like little shapes like this all the way down. It's almost like little uh, stained glass window um, segments, I guess you could say. Do this on both sides. Again, this is where a little bit of creativity it doesn't have to be the exact number of segments that I am drawing. Just however big yours is and how much room you've got, um, you can you can play with that. All right, now <clears throat> I'm going to draw a couple circles down here like this because the monarch has little white dots. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of all along the edges, but we have room for them right here. All right, now here's where we're going to take this to the, the whimsical level. Not that butterflies aren't already whimsical. I'm going to draw a couple of diagonal lines like this <clears throat> coming out. And you might think that those are the um, Antenna? antennas, but they're not. Oh, They're not. Mm. And I'm going to draw a couple little circles here. Like, how could that not be? Right. How could this that not be the antenna? antenna? It is. What are you talking about? Well, we're going to actually draw another little circle in the middle. Stephen, he's so experienced. All right, circle in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to draw a little curve here and a curve here. And we have a monarch monarch. Oh, man. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, I'm going to draw a little, little band here. Um, and now we're going to draw, mm. going to draw the antennas coming up there. Is this like a little there. Queen Elizabeth? You know, I you thought know? it was kind of appropriate with I Queen know. Elizabeth passing away. And I'm going to draw a couple little uh, Aww. filled in uh, dots up there, little <laughs> ovals at the top to kind of be the top of the thing. And then mm -hmm. um, we're going to draw a little, little face here. Aww. And we've got our uh, monarch... Monarch. That is the cutest. Not too shabby, I huh? I love this one. I know. Um, this is one, again, I always try to make them, and then you can uh, obviously Ooh, fill it yes. in if you want. Um, you can go a little bit. But I always try to make them open-ended so that you can add your own color, your own little uh, flair to it, I guess, your own creativity. This one, though, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of have a go-to butterfly, you know, drawing. It's really simple. This is kind of a neat way to kind of add more detail. Um, and obviously, I love the double meaning. Pretty cool. Not too bad, huh? I know. I like it. So I'm going to fill mine in here. I'm just going to color in the background so it's all... And let me say, I don't know what it was about that llama, but we were over... Uh, joy. It was our, it was our number oh, yeah. one submitted thing ever. It was so great, you guys. <laughs> Seriously. And everyone was better than the next or the last or whatever, however you say that. It was like, look at this one. Oh my gosh. It was so good. I hope we get a good um, response this I time know. too, because we love seeing what you I guys know. draw. Um, and it's kind of a fun little therapeutic. It's a Fun little cherry on top for us of the show, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's kind of fun to see who is playing along with us. Um, you know, and sometimes we get we get a lot of people watching on the replay who send things later, which is awesome. And uh, we have we we tried to cram a lot in. We're going to show a bunch of the uh, a bunch of the ones that we got from people. By the, you saw? Did you see that email from Ashley Atkins? That's like got caught up basically. I don't know if she's on tonight. Um, she did she like did a bunch of them. I don't know. Seven different let's draws and she sent me a whole bunch of them. It was really oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Oh, so how's yours going? Oh yeah. Too shabby. It's looking cool. I like the purple background. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to stick with the purple since I drew that, um, that face in black. I don't want to overpower the, so I'm going to go like a little darker purple. Nice. Purple, of course, is the color of royalty, so that fits, but... Um, this could take a while. There's a lot of details to play with. There's a lot of 
options. A lot of potential. And then right. here's the other thing is is monarchs have these little white white dots on the edges oh, yeah. of their wings, which That's is kind cool. of a signature thing too. So even though this is kind of an abstract version of a monarch, we do, do want to kind of give it that monarch vibe. Mm -hmm. And um, they also have little dots on their um, body oh. as well. That's cool how you can do the white on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's rad. And right. I'm actually going to put a couple uh, little jewels, little dots in the crown. Maybe these are rubies or something. All right. All right. So I think I got mine done. Woohoo! Oh, that looks pretty good, Kim. Thank you. Mm. Love the colors. Very fun one. And of course, we definitely want to see your monarchs you can send them to kj at escape it the cool thing about that email address is that we both get mm -hmm. uh to see them so uh real quick oh, we got man. so many these are just a few of the submissions we got from last month's show Lori, excellent job joyce did a really good job with this one i love the yellow mm -hmm. um dave i that I something it. about that one that really cracks me up i like his little uh little hat too yeah uh, Steven did a great job with the little flash wow. logo. It was kind of so fun. Cute. I know. Uh, moving along with uh, Tyler here. I love him. See, again, look I at how all, all unique. There's a unique little mm -hmm. uh, take. And then Pam uh, submitted this one, and she and her son. This is this was submitted together. Yeah. Uh, Corey. Uh, she and her son, Corey, were doing it together, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Beth. Nicely done. So cute. The nicely notes. done. Yeah. And, uh, Kim, here's Kim. I think she Aww. literally used the back of an envelope. Like, that it does is, look, oh yeah, it's pretty it's rad. Totally. Uh, and then Helen took it to another level here. I love this guy. I love the sunflowers oh, in there, gosh. the colors the of the fur, hat. Right? Little Marty in there too. It's oh, almost I like uh, taking an homage from Jennifer Tackett, who's always a. Uh, <laughs> often submitting uh, some good stuff too. So yeah. uh, this this is just a sample, you guys. We really love seeing all of your drawings. Please, please, please send your Monarch Monarchs to KJ at escapeitallhood.com. We'd love to see them. All right, what are we giving away tonight? Oh, we've got a good give giveaway tonight. Thank you to those who were stuck around all the way to the end here. We went a little bit longer than we were hoping for. Yeah. I blame Kim. Um, but what? Well, here's what we want to know. Here's what you can do to enter. So get these going in the chat. This is, again, a, a benefit of watching live, is that's how you can win the giveaway. What is adultitis's favorite banana split topping? Oh. This is going to be good. Oh, so is it going to get gross? Let's get these in. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, what do we got? What do we got to give away well, here? I was shocked mm. at what I see. You must have did something kind of special to get this in your hand. I did. Oh, <laughs> so. We've got a, uh, an 11 by 14 print, not yet available on the store yet. That's sweet. So that someone's going to win this tonight. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. Yes, it does. And this is kind of fun. This we got. We've got one of these. Jenna, in you're going to laugh, Jenna. Are you ready for this? Yes. Uh, you guys let's go with this? the lion theme, right? <laughs> a pillow, which mm -hmm. has got the neat, you know, logo on the back. This is actually a, the Burger King yep. um, art that uh, you might be familiar with. But yeah, it's I very soft them. and I cushy. Love doing lions. And then just because we're talking so much about Wonder Hunt, um, we're also going to throw in a deck of Wonder Hunt cards. So if you have one, please share it with a friend. Um, but yeah, maybe you don't, and you'll be able to start some fall winter hunts here. So this yes. is quite a little uh, offering here. It is today. a pretty good thing. Uh, Brenda know. Kinnear was the winner last week. We had or last month. We had a Brenda. really good uh, set with a tote bag and some fun goodies. And some chia really pets. interesting. Oh yeah, llama chia pets. Llama chia pet. Pet. You have yeah. to show us Brenda when you start growing it. All right. Yes. Well, let's see. What is Adultitis's favorite banana split topping? Oh, boy. Here we keep go. It on, keep a reminder, Kim, that we need to pick a winner in our heads okay. before the end of the show because the chat goes away when we yes. go off. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, Angela says no topping at all. Uh, Paul says thumbtacks. Oh. <laughs> uh, Stacy says broccoli. Uh, Mary Beth says mushrooms. Oh. Helen says Spinach. Ew, spinach. These are good. Um, yes. Christy Ward, dead flies. Oh. Uh, so this is a little, uh, 
Dave says dark chocolate. You got a problem with dark chocolate? How could that be? It's a preference. It's a preference. Yeah, How about yeah, sour maybe. gummy worms? Uh, well, Jessica oh, Marie. Yeah, no. Ketchup? Oh. Ketchup. On your ice cream. <laughs> Bill, Bill says ketchup. Nice. Helen one. says mealworms. Oh. Cor Corey weighs in with gravy. Oh. No, or Kara, right? Or, oh, Corey. Kara. And Kara. Oh, she, oh like, yeah. yeah. Kara put gravy too. Wow. <laughs> Gravy on the mind. Uh, um, that's so gross, by the way. Kelsey says nothing. They wouldn't have ice cream. Mm, that's a good point. Mm, well, good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else. Uh, Were there's original? <laughs> <laughs> How about Amy? Canned corned beef. Oh, nasty. <laughs> Nick, Nick Weston says castor oil. Hey, here's oh. what I want to know. Has anyone ever had castor oil? Or is that just like from cartoons and TV shows? Well, I, we'll see. Have you ever had that, Nick? Because I, I I don't even know what it is, but I've I can heard it. The bottle. I feel like little rascals. Right. They right. had castor oil, maybe. It is know. it a punishment or is it really like a medicine? I think it's some sort of medicine, but it's a it's it's used as nasty. Punishment. I think. Uh, <laughs> Jen is in with gravy, dirt and worms. Oh, Jennifer. Yeah. Um, These are good onions. <laughs> Julie says, here's clever. Adultitis's favorite banana split topping is boredom. Ooh, that's deep. Yeah, onions. I have to think about that Wet, one. Weta bugs. Weta bugs. I don't know, I don't know what wet. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it Weta? right, but that sounds gross. Nice and crunchy. Ooh. Okay. Chopped liver. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> salt, Earth, Heather. Earthworms. Salt. Salt. We like sweet extra and salt, salt, but not that. Not that yeah, much, no. no. Carrots and peas. I totally know what yours should be. What? Sauerkraut. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> mm, ah. He can't even handle the smell of it. And we live in the bratwurst capital of the world. Gross. Oh, nothing good about that. We're, I don't Fish know. Fish guts. It doesn't make sense. Oh, uh, yeah. Summer sun. I, oh, I assume that's like melting. to melt it. Mm, so it's spoiling. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Oh. Raisins. Doreen, Doreen was a raisin too. hater. I <laughs> yes, because it should be a chocolate chip. Um, mm -hmm. Mustard. Party, <laughs> mustard. Crispy. The uh, HP anchovies. Harry Potter Harry Potter every flavor beans. Oh. Anchovies. Brussels sprouts. Oh, oh, this is hard. You guys. Castor oil is a real thing. Confirms <gasps> Kathy Rose. Radish. Uh, cod liver oil. Says John Kim. Wayne. John, I don't know <laughs> what that means. Uh, there's got to be some stomachs. context there that I'm missing. Upset stomachs is uh, the castor oil. That kind of makes sense. Brooke says uh, wheat germ to make it healthy and add fiber. <laughs> uh, we've got we've got some you details. Guys. People are weighing in on what castor Dirty oil is socks. and how useful it is. Vanilla only. Uh, I yeah, that's good, mm. Kathleen. Yeah. How about ranch dressing? Oh, <laughs> that would that's that's one of those. Uh, that's good. Doesn't go Christy. good together. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this is going to be hard. They just keep month. coming. Yeah. You got dog hair. <laughs> that comes free on some people's, when, depending uh, on their house, right? You know what I would I would add to this is fruit flies, because they're kind of like my mm, arch nemesis right now. We flies. brought some fresh fruit into the house, and now I just keep fighting fruit flies. Mm, sounds like a personal problem. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Kim, keep Take a look at some of those. See see what you think. Oh, but we got to yes, we got to yes. move on. I got, um, I got, we got you got a couple ahead. ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, um, just a reminder for those of you watching, uh, especially on the replay, uh, to become an insider to find out when we are about to drop a new show because we do this show once a month, but we do not have a set schedule. Can I tell you something? I you talked can. to someone this week and she was like, I love your celebrate everything calendar and I love this. I'm like, well, of course you get our Sunday morning emails, right? She's like, no, what's that? I'm like, ah! <laughs> so those of you who, yes, the Sunday morning emails are this to become an insider. So you know what we're talking about. So I kind of wanted to jump so up. So please sign up because yeah. <laughs> you'll then get alerts to when we actually are having this live. You'll yes. have a chance to interact. In the chat, you'll have a chance to win these epic prizes. It's a lot of fun. So we'd love for you to join in the full full thing. Nick, that's exactly what I'm doing. It's working. So thank you. Thank you for affirming that. Oh, the apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Good tip. Good yep. tip. Uh, okay. We went a little bit longer than we expected, but we will be on uh, Zoom in a little bit for Wonder and Whimsy members. 
Join us for a little quick backstage hangout. Yeah. Won't be probably too long, but I gotta we'll be there. The laundry in between. We'll be, yeah, we'll be there. Give us a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> but <the> <laughs> uh, please, 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 please. The prescription this week uh, ties into the monologue. Let someone you know that you believe in them. Uh, one of the things I tell teachers a lot this time of year, I've been doing a lot of in-service things. As I say. Point out the, the good things that you notice about your students, about your friends, about your kids, about your spouse, um, and tell them and let them know that you believe in them because that is one thing that people cannot hear enough is that they have people on their side. So please take a moment this week to do that for someone in your life. But that is it for this show. Until next time, Adult Dietist Fighters. Yes, shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome. <laughs>